Our next presenter this morning is Trin Ha. Uh, she is in the class of 2017 and is pursuing a major in public health and a minor in statistics. Her research project looks at chronic hepatitis B within Minnesota's Vietnamese American community. Trin's research objective is to develop an effective community-based educational intervention for chronic hepatitis B using community-based participatory research methods. Please welcome Trin. Did you know? According to the World Health Organization, around 240 million people live with chronic hepatitis B. And according to the CDC in the United States, around 700 to 1.4 million people in the United States suffer with chronic hepatitis B. And while Asian Americans represent for less than 5% of the overall population, they account for more than 50% of chronic hepatitis B in the United States. In addition, Vietnamese American has the highest rate of chronic hepatitis B among the general population. Good morning, my name is Trinh Ha and I am from St. Catherine University. I was mentored by Dr. Ruby Nguyen from the University of Minnesota. And my research title is a case study on community-based participatory research methods among the Vietnamese Americans to increase knowledge about chronic hepatitis B infection. So chronic hepatitis B infection is a very contagious liver infection that caused by hepatitis B virus. And according to the World Health Organization, hepatitis B virus is 100 times more infectious than HIV. And as you can see that, that's a hepatitis B virus in an infected liver. And hepatitis B virus is transmitted through an infected mother to a child. Blood transmission, which is sexual contact and injection drugs use and from sharing and from excuse me saliva which is by sharing personal hygiene products for example toothbrush or razor so chronic hepatitis b can lead to serious liver complications such as liver cirrhosis which is liver scarring and hepat hepatocellular carcinoma which is liver cancer and liver failure. So here is a diagram that shows the progression of hepatitis B virus. If you can follow my clicker on the top left here of the screen, in order to develop chronic hepatitis B virus, this uh, virus, this virus that you see here must enter this healthy liver. And at this state, this liver becomes acute hepatitis B. And acute hepatitis B can lead to chronic hepatitis B. And at this state, chronic hepatitis B will lead, can lead to cirrhosis and liver cancer and potentially lead to death. Now let's come back to the acute hepatitis B. According to the research by Lin Chang and Seoul in 2007, about 47% of Asian participants will be able to clear this virus and, became Im and become immune to this. And it usually takes about six weeks to six months. However, about 11% of the Asian participants will not, will not be able to clear that virus. And therefore, they develop chronic hepatitis B after more than six months of, be of being infected with um, hepatitis B virus. So as mentioned earlier, Asian American were extremely infected with chronic hepatitis B. And here is um, the graph that from the Minnesota Department of Health shows the number of people living with chronic hepatitis B in Minnesota in 2014. So across this, this graph is the breakdown by race. And going up is the number of cases of chronic hepatitis B per 100,000 people. As you can see that 
This graph clearly showed that Asian or Pacific Islander has the highest rate of chronic hepatitis C in Minnesota. And follow after that is African American. In addition, according to the CDC, one out of 12 Asian American one out of 12 Asian American have chronic hepatitis B in the United States. And the problem though, it was not only just the high prevalent rates among this community, but there are differences within this community. As up to now, we know that Asian American has the highest rates, but there are certain groups in this community, such as the Vietnamese American, were <coughs> Me, have higher complications due by chronic hepatitis B. So study by McCracken and colleagues in 2007 described that the um, Vietnamese American men has the highest incident and mortality rates of liver cancer compared to the general population. For example, the incident rate of liver cancer in Vietnamese men was 54.5 versus 6.8 in white men. And the mortality rates in liver cancer in Vietnamese men was 34.5 versus, versus 6.0 in white men. In addition, the mortality rate of liver cancer in Vietnamese women, the mortality rate in, of liver cancer was seven times higher in Vietnamese women compared to white women. So chronic hepatitis B can be prevented by a three dose of vaccination in a period of five months. However, Vietnamese American was found to have very low rates of vaccination and screening compared to other races in our country. For example, across four different studies, the rate of the, partic the Vietnamese participant that have never been screened was ranging from 60% to 90% and that never been vaccinated was from 75% to 94%. So what happened? Why did Vietnamese Americans have such a high prevalence and low rate of vaccination? Um, and this is found in many studies that Vietnamese American, that there are some possible factor that contribute to this health disparity among the Vietnamese Americans. And the first factor is limited English proficiency. As described by Ma et al., Ma and others in 2007, ability to speak English has strong impact on communication with healthcare providers, such as asking questions regarding to vaccination and screening, and sharing about family health history. Another example is across the five different studies, the rate of the Vietnamese participant that neither speak or read English was ranging from 76 to 88 percent. Moreover, the second factor is cultural beliefs and risk perception. And it has been found in many studies that cultural beliefs and risk perception has strong association with health-seeking behaviors. And what does that mean? Um, for example, Her herbal medication can cure and prevent liver cancer. Another example for health, for a health seeking behavior is that Vietnamese individuals do not believe that they are high risk for hepatitis B. Therefore, they are less likely to go get testing and vaccinated for um, hep uh, chronic hepatitis B. The first factor is limited knowledge about chronic hepatitis B. And across from three different studies, we found that the rates of the participant that never heard of chronic hepatitis B were ranging from somewhere from 20% up to 60%. So these factors are very important to acknowledge because they can be reduced by increasing, um, by increased knowledge for the Vietnamese American on chronic hepatitis B. So this study is looking at ways to increase knowledge about chronic hepatitis B for the Vietnamese, Amer Vietnamese American in Minnesota. So in many studies, we found that community-based interventions 
has been successfully increase and address knowledge and health seeking behavior regarding to chronic hepatitis B. And one example for community based intervention is community based participatory research methods. And it's as described by Israel and colleagues in 1998 as a collaborative, the partnership approach to research that equally involves between the community members, organizational representatives, and researchers in all aspects of research process. So, um, as had mentioned before, the health disparity among the Vietnamese community continue or may have been rising due to the limited of interaction with the community members. In the past, community and their expertise have been underutilized in all say of research, which has shows in the development of research, development of effective, res effective uh, research tools and dissemination of um, research knowledge. So therefore, community-based participatory research method is an effective way to increase interaction with the community members. And the main purpose of community-based participatory is to eliminate health disparity among the Vietnamese Americans by using effective tools to create impactful and translatable research with, by collaborating with the communities and um, disseminate the finding and apply that into the research more effectively and rapidly. Successful community-based participatory has been shown that it's produced multiple benefits for the community. First is by gaining knowledge, by working with the community, and translate that knowledge into action. Then we can create multiple action plans that's relevant and effective for the community. After that, we can foster and improve the relationship with the community because now we have collaborative and working with them. And last, it's enhance the validity and generalizability of the research. From examining the rates of chronic hepatitis B among the Vietnamese in the community-based participatory research method, my research objective is to develop an, an effective community-based community educational intervention on chronic hepatitis B for the Vietnamese American in Minnesota by using the community-based participatory research methods. And how, and the method that I am using to achieve that objective is by using the community-based participatory research method that I found in literature and come up with an effective action plan to work with the community. And this action plan consists of identify a community partner, then set priority research goal and the mission statement for this collaborative. After that, develop expectation of trust and norm with the community partners. Then after that, we create the, the intervention material, which is consists of one hour of intervention educational program. Then a list of clinics, and at last is doctor hands out. Since my research project is still going on, here sh it shows the timeline of completion for my research project. So as far as future, um, future implication for this research project, we hope to increase knowledge and health seeking behavior regarding to vaccination and screening for chronic hepatitis B for the Vietnamese American in Minnesota. Furthermore, we hope to determine the effectiveness of the created materials for the, to the Vietnamese American in Minnesota. And in addition, we hope to create a community based participatory with the Vietnamese American in the um, in Minnesota. Overall, this, the ultimate goal of this research project is um, hopes to re reduce health disparity among the Vietnamese American by increasing knowledge and address health seeking behavior um, which regarding to chronic hepatitis B and um, vaccination and screening.
So this is my reference, and that concludes my presentation. I, mean, I am happy to take any question that you may have. Thank you very much for your suggestions. Um, yes, I. That's it's a great question, and I think that I will consider that. Uh, one of my study actually talk about that we have a very limited um, limited number of doctors that speak the language of the Vietnamese um, and the Asian Southeast Asian language. So I think. Part of the doctor handouts, we will have like um, say say that we're from the Southeast Asia community, and we at high risk population. So please consider taking tests for us. So our plan is to um, select community partners, organizations that within the Vietnamese community and uh, working with different organizations and then gathering information about that community. At the same time, working with this community to come up with the intervention, not only from the research side, but also collaborate with the community. Um, so that, that's why it's called community participatory research so that we um, get to know about that community and um, we have the input from the community organization as well. Uh, that's a really great question. Um, however, from the literature review, they only mentioned that herbal medication um, is one, that's actually only one small part of this presentation, and I did not focus on that part. But I can, you know, I'm happy to take out your number and then do more research about it and give more specific uh, statistic about um, my present uh, about that specific area. <coughs> Um, I do know a little bit about that. So there are three waves, that um, three different periods. And um, as far as I know, I don't know about the literature. They did not talk about it that much. But uh, Vietnamese American, um, after, the, after the American, the Vietnamese War, they start coming here. So that's the first wave after 1975.
the, the group that I am targeting here is more likely older people from 30, 30 year olds to like 45 years old, more like immigrants, immigrant Vietnamese that um, come from Vietnam. <laughs> Well, it's, it's important because Vietnamese, uh, Vietnamese culture is different than Laos culture, for example. And in addition, it's just, um, sorry, I'm just going to focus in culture because there are culture differences within the community. And there are also um, different um, statistics within this community as well. I hope that answered your question. Right. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I will take that into consideration. Thank you. Um, part of it, as I mentioned, is the li limited interaction with community, as I found in literature. And so because of that, we do not know. So researchers come in with the idea that, oh, I'm going to come and change your community. But we do not know what, what there is, what are the like, condition about the, that community. And um, because it's not, I think because it's not, it doesn't have the support from the communities organization, sometimes um, we miss out, you know, number of people. Yes. What benchmarks would you use to measure, to objectively measure the outcomes of this intervention? Um, well, as far as w I have not finished this project, so this, because this is a um, case studies, and the be oh, in order to measure this outcome, we will put it in. Uh, we will use t the created material and use this in a pilot study and test the effectiveness of this intervention that we have created in this um, case study. Um, the people would increase knowledge and um, health-seeking behavior after that. <laughs>